Hi everyone! So today is going to be a very different kind of video. I managed to get my hands on an Apple Vision Pro and I can wait to show you how it could be utilized for different design software and also just to give you a little overview of it. So if you ever need to design for it, you are already a little bit familiar with how it looks, how it functions without trying it on. I hope you enjoy. Let's jump in. So first thing is you are now seeing just the screen of the Vision Pro. Now, if you want to open up the apps, you just click here at the top. There's like a little digital crown like you would see on your watch. Uh, and then the apps come up to wherever you're kind of looking at. Now, the gestures are you just look at different things. So now I'm looking at music, mindfulness, safari, photos, and you can see how those apps sort of pop up when I do that. Um, and then if I want to select something, all I need to do is this pinching motion. So my thumb and my index finger. So if I want to open notes, for example, I'm going to look at it. So you see that I'm looking at it and then I do this and it will open up. At the bottom of every single screen, they'll have this bar. If I grab this bar, I can move it around so I can place it wherever I want to place it. And if I look at the bottom right corner, I get that little white thing and then I can make it bigger, make it smaller, anything like that. So these are kind of the gestures to be familiar with. Just to show you how the keyboard looks, so if I'll tap on this note, I get the keyboard in the air. Now in order to use this, I can look at the letters and then just pinch to select them or I can reach out in the space. So I'm reaching out now and I'm gonna delete that. And you see, I really need to kind of touch it. So I'm bringing it closer. Um, and then I really need to just like click on it in the space and say, yeah. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Now next to the bar, there'll be the X. And if I look at it, it will become an X and I can just close it. So just to show you a few native apps and how they work, let's look at settings just so you can see how it looks. So uh, if I want to scroll, I'm just pinching and then moving up and down. I would say that most of the Vision Pro kind of native setup looks very much like the iPad. So you see it's using the sidebar on the side. I can flick between uh, the different things over here. Um, and then inside of it, if I just go back to general, you can see these kind of table cells. The only difference really is the colors and that effect of when I look at different things, how they act. I think as designers, it's really important for us to be familiar with how these different tools uh, act if we are going to be designing for them. We're gonna look at Safari later and a few other apps, but I just wanna show you one more native thing that comes with Vision Pro that is quite essential to understand and is really cool, and that's environments. So as I mentioned, there's the crown here at the top, and if I start spinning it, you'll see I have two options. If I look at volume and I spin, I can change the volume of the speakers of the Vision Pro. But if I look on this one and I keep spinning, I'm turning on environments. Now, <laughs> what you can see is I am now in a completely new environment and it's all around me. This is sort of like some snowy landscape, but my apps are still open at the same time and you can see, hello, my hands are here. So if I look at the side on the menu, which is also a very new concept, we haven't really seen this sort of design anywhere. And also there's, I don't know if you can hear this if through the recording, but there's like some, some like sound effects going on. So if I look at that menu and go into environments, I can change this environment. So for example, let's go into this mountain hood. It's just gonna download it. So I'm now in this beautiful landscape and I don't know if you can hear the rain, I really hope you can, but there's this gorgeous sort of rainfall and I can see everything through it. Now the thing about environments is I can now tap on the crown again and I'm going to apps and let's say open notes again, I can fully function within Vision Pro so I can have uh, the notes open and then on the side I can open Safari, I'll move that there and then I'll click on this and I'll also open the mail app, yeah, I don't have it set up yet, but you can see I can kind of have a space where I have everything set up and work on everything simultaneously, which is absolutely incredible. It basically gives you an endless sort of canvas. Now, the good thing about um, the environment is it still protects you. So if someone gets too close to you or you get too close to someone, if you're moving around or to an object, it will kind of suddenly appear within the within the environment, so you are protected. So now let's jump into some design software on the Vision Pro. So I want us to start with Freeform, which is the one that kind of comes with all the Apple products, just to show you how it can even look. So if I pinch and move around, you can see that I am moving the canvas around. And again, I can make this an infinitely huge canvas. Um, and then I can grab the tools from down here. Let's say I'll grab this crayon, make it, let's select a different color. Let's go to spec no let's go spectrum yeah and i want to make it probably 
surprise, surprise, some sort of like purple. And then wherever I'm looking, so you see, this is actually tracking. So within Freeform, this is actually tracking my hand rather than my eyes. So my eyes kind of mean nothing within the drawing. You see, I'm kind of doing that. It's very pretty. I can change to a different style of pen. I can go with some paint even. So you kind of paint a whole area. Um, we know this app. I'm not here to explain how this app works, but just to show you that this specific design tool uses my fingers and where they are going. And I'll show you a few other ones that actually use your eyesight to select where it's gonna go. I haven't really decided on which I prefer. I think the finger one is a tiny bit more intuitive. So let's close that and move on to our next app. So the next one I wanna show you is Adobe Fresco. Now, again, this is where that whole like iPad thing really comes into play. If you use an iPad, then you might be familiar with Adobe Fresco and how it works on there. Um, I'm just gonna create a new document. And then, yeah, we've got this canvas. Let's start to see what we can do. So let's select this paintbrush. I'm looking at the color, the flow. Ooh, okay. So I wanted to move the slider down. There we go. And then let's select a color. I'm looking at the wheel. Let's make it blue, yeah. So now that circle over there, that white, that kind of like, this circle. I'm not 100% sure what that one's about. I can tap and move it, but then let's say I want to paint now. It's actually painting where I'm looking. So I'm looking at the top right of the canvas, looking at the bottom left of the canvas. If Even if my, let's say my hand was all the way up here, but I'm looking at the top left. Yeah. So it's kind of about where I look which is so weird and very unintuitive. I've made up my mind now. I pr prefer freeform better. So I think once you start, oh, okay. This is also, these brushes are very flowy. I'm gonna choose a different brush. But once you do the first tap and you figure out where you are, if I keep pinching and I move it around, then it is quite intuitive. But that first thing of like, I need to look where I want it to start painting. Oh, yeah, see what I did? I know what I did now. If I, I'm looking at that, uh, like over here, yeah, where my finger is. If I pinch and hold, it gives me an eyedropper and then I can start painting. Let's have a look at another app, which I think is actually pretty cool. Um, it's called Live Surface. So if I go into projects, I'll click add a surface and then I go back to the homepage and I kind of scroll down and look at all, uh, all the unlocked ones. This can cost money, obviously, but there are some free things here that you can use. Let's do that one, ban banner one, eight. So um, I can almost like double tap to, to get it going. So now I have this canvas over here and this is the banner. So I can add uh, artwork onto here. So I can click drag and drop artwork, add from photos. And then let's say I'll select this one. It's just my banner kind of from YouTube. Then I can pinch to make it kind of larger or smaller. And you can see how it looks on um, kind of on that bottom left. So let's say I'll move it up to here. Obviously this is not going to be perfect. Let's add another one. So I'll click on that duplicate and then I'll move that down. Yeah. I, I looked kind of at the canvas and then I was able to rotate it to uh, move it around. And this one, can I rotate it? Yeah, that's pretty cool. So it's kind of rotating it in. Let's say I wanna add another image. So maybe I click on this plus, add from photos. I'll add this, move it down to here and then I can make it a bit smaller probably that here see so it's just it's just a pretty fun software to be honest and then what's so so cool about it let's move me down a little bit if i look at this undock um it's just gonna show me it kind of in in the middle and then i can click on enter space and then what happens is it's gonna say to me stay aware of your surroundings okay and then if i just move this to the side so look at where i am first of all i'm in this like white dotted space um, and then I can see this billboard kind of hugely before me, which is just, I think, I think it's amazing. And, and even look like right now, I can't really do anything, but you can see, I can see now how, how, how bad I am. <laughs> I can, we can all see together how bad I am at removing backgrounds. Yes. You can see that kind of fuzzy border around me. Whereas when we looked at it on, on the screen or on a laptop or on a big screen, we, we might've not noticed that. So it's good to kind of look at this and see, okay, this is how it's going to look when it's, 
you know, on a huge screen. I know that's kind of like this, like almost scaffolding that's in the way, but yeah, I, it's still, how cool is that, right? So now let's move on to the app that we've all been waiting to see, and that is Figma. There are two ways that I found so far to open Figma through the Vision Pro, but let me show you the first one first, and that is through Safari. So I'll open Safari, I'm just looking at it and pinching. So I'm in my Figma screen on Safari. I've already logged in and you can see that I can scroll through my different um, projects on here. I can select a different project if I want, but I'm going to select practice auto layout. Uh, and if I tap on it, you see that it's now selected. And if I tap on it again, it should open it. I've been kind of struggling with get it to open. I think maybe a double tap is what's needed, but I'm not 100% sure. Now we've got the file open. And just to show you, if I want to move around, I can't select just with one finger if I, tap, if I uh, pinch and drag with one finger, I'm just doing this sort of selection. If I do it with two pinches at the same time, I'm sort of moving around and I can also zoom in and zoom out. Now I wanna get to this, um, to this card, sorry, this card that I made. Come on, this card, no, look down, look down. Ah, see, already encountering issue number one there we go so i can just double tap on it and it will take me to it similar to how you can do it within just figma itself and then if i zoom out a bit so if i look at the corner i can pinch and move it around and this is an auto layout with certain kind of dynamic ability so you can see that it is changing semi-dynamically but that's more about how it's set so for example if i look at this guy and then from fixed it's hard to look at fixed. See, now I'm like, the, the width has now opened as this, but I'm trying to actually look at that. Yeah, fill a container. There we go. So now if I select this, look at the corner and drag, you see it's kind of filling automatically. Um, I think the main thing about using Figma here is that you don't have your keyboard. So you don't have any keyboard shortcuts to utilize, which as you know, I love a keyboard shortcut. So I thought it could be cool to, to look at how we can add some stuff on here. So I'm just going to move a bit in the canvas, look at my tools and then, yeah, let's add a rectangle. I'll just drop it in and then I want to add another one. So I'll go there again and make another one there. Yeah. Now let's say I want to make this a different color so I can just type in something, let's say red or I can, I'm going to look at the other one. There we go. So I do have this kind of the normal picker. I can do the different hues, stuff like that. Okay. So this is, this is an exercise in looking where you want to make an action. So if while I was looking, I'm, so I'm tapping on the canvas now, if while I'm looking at the red square, I want to like drag and select, it's, <laughs> it's almost really difficult to do that. I need to look outside. Let's say I want to add an auto layout now. Lovely. Now what's missing is scrubbing. So we're really used to hovering our mouse next to like where it says 14 now and then just scrubbing. But I can't seem to get that to work. Um, I can only get this to work where it opens it up and then you can tap a number. Now if I am in here, that pink thing still exists. So I can scrub it inside of the canvas left and right to get them to where I need them to be. But you know, you win some, you lose some. Uh, I can also, let's say, add in corner radius. What's really annoying is that this actually, all of these open up this keyboard and then I have to go into numbers to change it. Maybe that will change. I know that the new Vision OS was announced, so potentially it will be updated. So now I'm going to show you the second way that I can connect to Figma or really anything else that's on my Mac using the Vision Pro, and that's extending the MacBook Pro screen into the Vision Pro. Now the way this works is, I'm just going to look here, apologies for the messy environment, but you can see that over my MacBook it says connect. So it's basically recognizing that this is a MacBook that uses the same iCloud as my Vision Pro. So if I look at that connect and just tap to select it, it will say connecting. Then what's gonna happen is that the MacBook itself is gonna go black and boom. My desktop screen is now just up here, okay? So I'm gonna move that back a bit and you can see that it is huge. And in order to control this, I can't use any gestures. I can only use the trackpad and the keyboard. So for example, I'm gonna close this off, close that. This is me recording my sound. I can make that smaller. And let's make 
Figma a lot bigger. Yeah, so now if I try and pinch and zoom and do all these things, nothing's gonna happen. The only things I can control with the uh, gestures is with the bar at the bottom, moving this to where I want it to be and looking at the corner and making it bigger. So you can see I can make this absolutely huge. Now I don't know why I would want this, but maybe if you're doing really intricate work or you're doing something that's gonna go on a huge billboard, I don't so that means that I have to be kind of in constant connection with my MacBook as well. And you can see it's not laggy, but it's a tiny bit laggy. So now I can still use something like this. I can still use my commands through my keyboard. So now I'm clicking on T, tapping in. Hello. Yeah, so I can still do all of that. There is still some advantage to this because A, like we saw, we can make it huge. And then also that multi experience. So while this is open, I can still click on my apps. I can also open, I don't know, Netflix or something like that. So I can still have multiple, multiple of the Vision Pro kind of things open at the same time and have my MacBook screen open. And that's that, I hope you enjoyed. I managed to get my hands on a Vision Pro and I thought, you know what, I can't overlook this opportunity. And I thought I have to make a video for you guys and just show you what you can do with them, give you a little taster of Figma and a few other design apps. Uh, and that's that, I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, see you at the next one.